Hi, and welcome to Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. I'm Susan. And I'm Lisa. Welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, business etiquette and professional image and what to do, what not to do in terms of networking and being successful uh, in your professional life. And just in business, in the office setting, I mean, things have changed quite a bit over the last 10, 15 years in terms of just the introduction of all the uh, electronics and technology and, you know, uh, people could sit right next to each other and not s talk to each other all day. They text or email or even, uh, I know it's passe, talk on the phone, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed and there's a lot of things that basic etiquette rules basic uh, things that help you to keep a professional image, I think that people have forgotten or, you know, well, don't I think, think about. You know, I think you mentioned technology, but I think we're in a 24, almost like a 24-7 work world now, especially if you're a professional uh, with a lot of responsibilities and possibly uh, reduced staff because of these economic times. Uh, so we really have a lot of demands and it doesn't, it, it gets harder and harder to keep your personal life and your professional life separate. So it's easy to let those behaviors and those um, those lines get blurred a little bit. I think that's true, and I think there's a lot more people working from home, whether yeah. they have their own businesses or whether they're telecommuting. Yep. And so I think that gets challenging because because you're screaming at your kids one minute, <laughs> right. and then you got to be on the phone, you know, with the conference call the next, and sometimes you know you can't switch back and forth so quickly. And I and I think the the other thing that's really important about this show is what's the impact on your image. You know, because and you're because every one of those things, we think, oh, it's no big deal. But somebody else is interpreting it. Somebody else is uh, making assessments mm. about how professional you are or how mm -hmm. um, reliable or credible you are, and we might not even take it into account. And we sabotage ourselves. We could sabotage our, our, sabotage ourselves with just one misstep. And, uh, you know, we did a show recently on getting the edge. Yes. And so, you know, when, the, when uh, you know, the workplace gets very competitive, you want that promotion, uh, you want that job even, and you want the promotion. And so everything has that much more meaning and is that much more impactful. And you can do something that, you know, maybe 10 years ago it would have been forgiven or overlooked. Today it's like... That's it, you know. Uh, unemployment rate is 10%. There's plenty of other people right. in line for that job or that promotion. So if you make one little misstep, that's it, you know, yeah. on to the next. It's tough. Yeah, so this is one of those shows that uh, really is going to delve into a lot of different areas, but really specifically, we're talking about sort of even uh, extending that theme of getting the edge, but, yeah. you know, professional image and business etiquette and, you know, sort of the do's and don'ts. and you know, how to, how to best uh, put your best foot forward in your professional life. Yep. So we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back with our guest, and we'll uh, see you in a minute. Welcome back to Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. Today we're talking about business etiquette and professional image, and we are thrilled to have with us Juanita Ecker, who is uh, definitely one of the foremost people on this topic. She owns a company called Professional Image Management, and she is here with us today, and we are psyched. So thank you, Juanita, for joining us today. Hello, Lisa and Susan. <laughs> it's great to have you. So thank let's you. just start by, why don't you tell people a little bit about your business and, and a little bit about how you got into this uh, world of professional image management? Well, my company, as you mentioned, is professional image management. And when I think of image management, I think of the whole package. And that includes how people dress, as well as their business savvy practices, mm. which mm. is business etiquette, and their mm -hmm. grooming, and their relationship building skills. So it's all part of one's professional presence. Absolutely. Mm. Well, that, that's how I met Juanita. 
Um, I remember I was looking for, I was coming up on a very significant number in terms of my birthday and looking for someone to kind of set me in a, on a new course towards how I dressed and having a professional image and Googled pro, uh, professional image consultants in the capital region and, and your name was the only name that popped up. I remember that. Um, and so I called you, and that's that's how I met one. Well, and then, many I, years and then ago. you introduced me to her, and we, because yeah. well, it was soon after I first started my business, and I was going into more companies, getting away from the personal success work, and yeah. you know wanted to uh, create a business, more business image, and and mm -hmm. so that's when you worked with me. So mm -hmm. uh, it's great that we're able to get your expertise to help more people. Yes, so. yeah. and it's not just the dress; it's business etiquette. No, you help me with that too. You know, when you're at a cocktail. Recipe, when you're entertaining a client over a dinner, when you receive people at your business, or when you go visit a client, mm -hmm. all of these things, how you answer the phone, the email, all of these things are part of it. I want to hear from you, you know, I'm sure you, you know, you've had your business for how long now? 13 years. Just, really. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what, it, what are the trends that you see? What are people asking for more of now that maybe have changed since, you know, you first started? Well, maybe uh, 10 years ago, m most of my programs were business casual because that's when sort of the business casual trend had just come in and then companies wanted guidelines for dress codes and what to mm. allow their employees mm. to wear on a Friday. Mm. But now companies have gone to the extreme and it's gotten worse. What do you mean? Well, pe people are dressing too sloppy oh, because okay. now we're business casual every day not just Friday. Really? And so companies are complaining that they want to raise the bar a little bit because people are dressing like it's Saturday versus a work day. Oh, I can't mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. And what um, what kinds of things do you offer them? I mean, what are what are, do you have standards that you suggest or how do you go about helping companies with that? Well, when I work with a company, I work with them on what they want to allow and what they don't want to allow. It's pretty much uh, customized to them because mm -hmm. every company has a certain dress code. Mm -hmm. But you asked me, uh, what am I getting more requests for now? I get much more requests for business etiquette now than the business casual. Oh, really? Because oh. Uh, right now, we have people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s who have never been exposed to business etiquette. Mm. And mm -hmm. so we have young people in the workplace maybe not really knowing what's inappropriate because they've not had that kind of training. That's right. Mm -hmm. And and there's um, a different feel in terms of communication for the 20-somethings versus the 30-somethings and up. And that was one of the topics I was hoping we'd get to was how is this intergenerational exactly. uh, workforce impacting etiquette? Well, one intergenerational thing that I can think of is young people, they text. And people like my age, we, we send email. And mm. we don't text on our cell phone. We would just rather send an email. Mm. And so at work, they're discovering that they're, they're having some problems because young people will text and it's very informal mm. and they'll use the abbreviations. And then mm. people who are, you know, in their, in their 50s, are, are like, what is this? I don't understand. Right, they're being rude. Right. And, and so both generations kind of have to make a little compromise in terms yeah, of what's acceptable. Yeah. I, I teach, and I teach a business class online. And uh, I, can, I find with my younger students, and I, can, I don't see these students because it's all online, but I can tell which ones are the younger ones because we have an online discussion forum. And some of them at the very beginning of the semester will uh, communicate in a way, I mean, I'll ask, a, I'll pose a business-related question, and they'll communicate in a way that it is like a, a social blog, I mean, with the kinds of spelling, many spelling errors and very casual language and, you know, uh, smiley faces and laugh out loud, and I have to instruct them that this is formal business communication. Yes, it's online, but, you know, practice in this class how you would engage in a formal business setting because that's what this is, even though it's electronic communication. Exactly. And, I, and yeah. that's what companies are doing. They bring in someone like myself to help set up guidelines for the technology. 
mm -hmm. in, in terms of what's acceptable, what isn't. Mm -hmm. Are there any kind of general do's and don'ts that might help our audience to, you know, to think differently about using technology? Or? Well, pick the technology and well, then let's say, we'll address Well, let's it. say the, a cell phone and texting. Let's start okay. there. Okay, okay, the cell phones. The biggest complaints I hear with cell phones is that people are using their, their cell phones at work when other people are trying to work. Mm -hmm. And so they're having conversations that might be loud, yeah. or they put people on speakerphone, and you have to be careful. And these are personal calls. Well, even if it's work related, okay. but you know, people are answering the phone in a restaurant, and so the cell phone has kind of gotten so intrusive. Yes, yeah. intrusive. Now, isn't it funny? I, I I read an article about this. For some reason, when people answer their cell phone, they automatically speak louder, mm -hmm. even though the technology is such that you don't have to. But you could pick up an office phone, and people won't you you won't hear them. If you're in the you know office next door, but if they talk on their cell phone, yes. you will. Yes, oh, that I, does seem to happen. I, I'm guilty of that. I have to say, well, we I'm, I'm practically deaf anyway. I mean, I, I I just my hearing is not great, so I do scream into a cell phone. I don't know why. Well, it's it's a very common thing. It doesn't help me hear the other person <laughs> better though. <laughs> and <laughs> you're hoping they'll respond in kind. That's yeah, right. It's called Please mirroring. Go. There yes. you go. Yes. If I talk and, louder, uh, maybe you will. You know, and, and I have to say, you know, when I was working in an office setting, I would I would get on speaker because I had to do like five different things all at once. I'd be having a meeting over here and I'd be tech you know, typing something here and I'd do my meeting on my call on speakerphone, and I'm screaming into my speaker, and you know people complained. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. sure. and that's why they bring people like Juanita in, is because right. yeah. of people like you. Right. Know. So let's and talk you mentioned about texting. Yeah. So you said texting. That's a big issue. Right now, the young people think it's okay to text in a meeting because, yeah. as you said, people are used to multitasking. Mm -hmm. But we have to think about how is it being perceived. And if you are a young employee who's texting in a meeting, you will be perceived by upper management mm -hmm. as not a team player mm -hmm. because you're sending the message, whoever is on this email mm -hmm. or this test text message is more important than listening to you right now. That's right. Yeah. You know, I train managers in communication and that's one of the biggest things that I hear from the managers I talk to is how do you get people to listen to you because they're texting or they're multitasking and how do you, you know, how do you capture their attention? And one of the things I tell them all the time is you have to speak to their listening, right? You can't just speak to your own. So what does that mean though? Well, I don't want to get too off, far off topic, right. but I mean, like, what's important to them? Oh, okay. You know, you have to really talk about what's mm -hmm. important to them. But above and beyond that, I mean, to me, it's such a pervasive issue. I mean, it comes up in almost every training I do, yeah, I think dealing with texting. And I they have to be a good role model. So many managers say, well, I don't want my people texting in meetings. But then when I do a training session, they're sitting in the back texting. And I'll mm -hmm. say to them, no, that's right. you come to my session and you, you be a good role model. And, that's, and right. a lot, that's a lot of the issues right now with all the different generations. Yeah. I, I think though that we, we have to consider that people are workers are just so stretched. Yes. And maybe, you know, something for business management to, to look at is do they are they having just the number of meetings that they really need? Are they having too many meetings? Are they inviting the wrong people to the meetings? Yes. Um, and so not to excuse bad behavior, but I think that it is an opportunity for manage to ex management to examine are they managing appropriately too. Exactly. That's a complaint that people feel like they're overworked. They have to keep their Blackberries on so they can check emails at night or check mm -hmm. emails on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we get no downtime as a result of it. Mm -hmm. And they say productivity is actually decreasing as a result. That that 24 hour work cycle um, weekends, everything, you know, people are working, but the productivity goes down because people see ahead of them that they have so much to do or they think they have all this time to do it that they don't, they're not as productive in this moment. And even multitasking effectiveness is a myth. Uh, have you heard about that? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
that you really find that the more you multitask, the less effective that you are, mm -hmm. and the more mistakes you're likely to make. And people think they're getting more done, but if they would just take 15 minutes and finish this one project and move on to the next, mm -hmm. they would feel a more sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. as well than having their hands in five different projects at once. Mm -hmm. so, so when you're talking about image, you're talking about this whole package. So we're talking about how a person dresses. Yes. But that would, I would also think, would include grooming and things like that. Exactly. Right? Grooming habits. Mm -hmm. We're also talking about how they act at work, either with their internal customers or external customers. Could be your prospects and clients, or it could be coworkers that are in another department that may also be sort of your customer. Are there well, some, I'm sorry. Can I, can I ask, when, when you say how they act at work, can you say more about that? Okay, how they answer the telephone, if they do answer the phone. <laughs> uh, the email, that's another big issue. Uh, the email has gotten way too casual. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, sometimes people will use all lowercase letters, mm -hmm. or they'll, they'll CC managers when they don't need to. And I have managers that tell me, I get 150 emails a day. I can't possibly get through them all. Mm -hmm. Managers don't want to be CC'd on everything. Sending inappropriate emails, mm -hmm. uh, sending uh, emails with no subject line because the first thing people do if they decide they want to open up an email is look at the subject line. Mm -hmm. Is this important? Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and what about uh, the emails that um, deal with conflict? Like you could have yes. an argument through email and, and it's and you that's don't, really dangerous. You want to pick up the phone and call the person and say it seems like we're having a communication issue. You don't want to fire someone by email. We've all heard the stories of big companies that, you know, on Friday afternoon people got an email and said, don't come back on Monday. Mm -hmm. That's not right. No, that's you know? wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and I've had people, young people that have worked for me, send me an email. Oh, I, I, I got another job. I'm not going to work for you anymore. Mm -hmm. It's inappropriate. Right. I mean, because uh, how would you ever want to give a recommendation for that person? No matter how good an employee they were, it leaves that bad taste in your mouth. Sure, yeah. sure. And, and let's face it, we're all being judged. Every time we do anything, right, you get judged. And so you have to, not that you can ever, um, how do I want to say, you can't stop someone from judging you, but you certainly want to put your best foot forward, wouldn't you agree? Exactly, when we talk about business etiquette, it is not raising your pinky when you drink a cup of tea. Mm. It's really creating an impression and thinking about the message that you are sending, how others are perceiving you. You want that message to be a positive one. Don't you think that a lot of people don't know what a professional image is? Right. Yeah, and so especially how young people, I have to say. I mean, oh, I, I hate I, to say young people, but I think it's probably true. Well, I've oh. seen it in all lots of different okay. um, age groups. I mean, I've met some young people that are very, very yeah, professional. And then I've worked with some managers who literally were reading a newspaper while I was talking. So it wasn't texting, but it was definitely to convey a message. But then leaving me with the impression of, I would want to work for this person, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So I think that it does, you know, that kind of behavior. But d how do you get someone, for example, let's say a, a company sends people t to your class. How do you get them to know you're talking to them, not <laughs> to somebody else? Do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes people aren't self-aware. Mm. I like to present it as these are tools you can use that will help you in your own career advancement, whether you stay with this company or go with another mm, company. That's good. I always try to present it as, do I always use a hammer? No. But when I need to use a hammer, I need to know how to use it correctly or I will have a swollen thumb. Mm -hmm. right? and, and that's the way I like people to think of business etiquette. When they are in front of a client, when they are in front of their manager, when they're working with coworkers, when people are observing them, I want them to take those tools out of the toolbox. Right. When they're home, they, if they don't want to use them, they don't have to. That's good, but do, have you ever had like a, a situation where maybe a manager has a specific person that they have a problem with, but that person doesn't see that they have a problem? Do you okay. know what I'm saying? Sometimes companies will send me high potential individuals that they are grooming for the next level, and I'll spend a day with them, or sometimes more, and we really find out how that person is showing up. I get examples from the manager. Mm. Oh, he said this, or he did this, or the body language was this. And we practice how to reframe it mm. To, mm. to create a better perception oh, or a better it. response. Because it's true, when you say to someone, oh, you're acting unprofessionally, that means nothing. You, you need to give them very specific things yeah, when that you they're do doing. This. 
people think that. Yes. I'll nice. never forget, it's a long time ago, I was working, I was 16, working in a restaurant, and it's the silliest thing, but I was a, a sports fan of a particular group, a particular team, and somebody came through wearing attire, and I was like, yay, you know, that team. And so later, my manager pulled me aside and said, you know, that's fine if there's nobody else in line but you don't know how many people are in line think that team is terrible. Mm -hmm. And you may have just lost people. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me mm -hmm. since I was 16 years old. I, you know, like I never uh, you know, thought about that until that moment. So I think a lot of times you know, we say things and we don't recognize that a lot of people are hearing it. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we probably all pretty much know the basics like um, you shouldn't swear at people, you know, you should make sure that you're clean and that your clothes are clean. But beyond that, I think a lot of people um, figure they'll just show up every day and do their jobs. I mean, I think that there is a lot to be said for showing up every day and doing your job to the best of your ability and being polite. I mean, that will get you. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, that'll get you pretty far. Sure. Um, but what we're talking about here is really what's going to get you to the next level. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And more nuanced behaviors. And, and most of the things that I teach, people know on some level, and it's my job to bring it back to the focus. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's in the forefront. These mm -hmm. things have sort of slid to the, because people are so busy, they, they don't put the importance on mm -hmm. some of these kinds of behavior. So we're, so we're talking about don't text when the boss is doing a presentation. Yes. What other kinds of things are we talking about that will take you beyond being okay? You know, and and will um, we'll make you the kind of person that a company will see something mm -hmm. and be willing to invest mm -hmm. uh, in someone like you to come in and, and get them to an even higher level in the company. What kinds of the behaviors are we talking about? Companies Be are looking for employees with good people skills, good mm -hmm. interpersonal skills. Mm -hmm. And they look to see, does someone introduce themselves? Do they introduce others? Mm -hmm. When they go to a, a cocktail reception, do they just stand in the corner with their coworkers? Mm -hmm. When there's a, mm -hmm. an event, maybe where clients are there, do they go around and mingle? Mm -hmm. Or is it just, Oh, the clients are there and the employees are there. People, companies want people that have those good networking skills, good people skills, because those are the people that will positively reflect their corporate brand. Mm. And help generate business, exactly. right? Help bring in business. Because we all do business with people that we know, like, and trust. And you have to get to know that person on some level. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't happen through texting and email for the most part. That happens through face-to-face -face contact. Yeah. Yes. And you can get any product anywhere today. People are buying from people that they like and that they trust. And that make them feel good. Yes. I mm -hmm. find that when I call a company or I uh, visit you know, a store, if, if I'm treated well, I want to go back. I was recently, I do a lot of speeches, and I was recently at a hotel. Every single one of the staff was better than the next. They were wonderful, just wonderful. I already wrote a letter acknowledging them. I put in a comment card and I said, I will recommend this hotel to other conference planners that I know because mm. I felt so great being mm. there. I had to go up for several things that I needed as a speaker. That happens. Every, nothing was a problem. Of course, Mrs. Juicy, whatever you need. And it was fantastic, and you don't recognize what a, how much that helps, and you know, or how much when, when it's missing, you're so used to it, and then all of a sudden you see it. Yeah. It's like, wow, that was awesome, right? You, know, you can you can really tell if you go, for example, to a restaurant where mm. the restaurant takes customer service and training of their staff, their wait staff. Yeah. If they they really invest in their wait staff and and bring them through professional training, you can tell yes. the difference when you go to that restaurant as opposed to, you know, a, a place that doesn't make that kind of an investment in the training. There's just something about that polish, yes. you know, that professional polish. It's almost, uh, I don't know, intangible, but there's there is, a, you know, there's no problem here. Yeah. We're going to make you happy. That's We're, right. You're, you know, you're going to have your needs handled, and it's that feeling. 
um, exactly. that you get as a customer. And when, when there's enough polish, then customers can overlook mistakes. That's right. Mm. When the polish level is down, it's, it's easy to say, hmm, I'm not sure I want to deal with this company if there are too many issues. Now, but have you have you excuse me have you found that it's harder and harder because we're we're in a time right now we have about close to a 10% unemployment rate we have people who are working really stretched and they you know they're building up resentment and do you find it more and more of a challenge to to address this issue i, I, I mean or you know, has it kind of fallen by the wayside, or is there more of a demand for it? Or, you know, I guess what I'm saying is the economic situation that the country is currently in, you know, a time of recession, how has that impacted the need for business etiquette and the investment in business etiquette? Well, I think the need for business etiquette will always be there, mm -hmm. because as you said earlier, people just aren't aware. When we go back to, you know, that, that people are busy and it's yeah. becoming part of the corporate culture, yeah. I do have those people in my seminars tell me, gosh, you know, if I don't text, I won't be able to get all the work done. However, you have made me more aware of when to text and mm. when not to, and mm -hmm. it's kind of making their judgment a little bit more should I or shouldn't I? Where before they just did it without thinking about right. the right. implications. That's right. That's the thing is making people more conscious. Yes. Now we only have a few minutes left and um, one of the topics I just wanted to touch on, I know we could do a whole show on, but what about social media and business etiquette? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I know there's LinkedIn and Facebook, but I'm hearing stories of people getting on Facebook and saying things about their company and then getting fired. Exactly. And Social media, it's, it's, it's the internet that means it lasts forever. You don't want to post on Facebook that you're up in the Adirondacks canoeing when you called in sick that day. <laughs> because it will get back to your boss. Someone yes, it will, will forward it mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. You don't want to, to speak disparagingly about the company. You don't want to talk about company issues. Companies have really uh, been uh, cracking down on what people are posting on their Facebook pages on Twitter mm -hmm. because it could affect their career. Yeah. Oh, and definitely in terms of uh, being hired because the first thing that happens when you go in for a job interview is they Google you. Exactly. And, you know, if there's something out there that you've made a misstep and it's and it's been posted. If there's pictures with alcohol, yes. they're going to see that. Even a beer. I mean, now when I, if I go to an event where there's um, wine or beer or something, I won't, e I won't even drink a soda because it's a glass with liquid. It can be interpreted as anything. Yes. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if you were, uh, any like uh, general tips that we could leave our audience with in terms of, I know, you know, there's so many things, but, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe um, just something that you would feel like would be a very useful thing for people to know. I know I put you right on a, the spot. A general tip in <laughs> yeah. what is be conscious? Is that something? Yes, be more aware of how are you being perceived it is really the message I'd like to send. I'm not saying that these behaviors are wrong, but in certain situations it might not be the best choice. It's not mm. the image that you want to mm. put across. Yeah, yes. okay, that's a good point. Believe it or not, we're out of time. It goes <laughs> so fast every time. I want to thank you so much for watching Real Conversations with Lisa and Susan. I want to thank you, Juanita, thank you, for Lisa, being our guest. And, Susan. and again, it's professional image management. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Thank you.